Hello students, today you will be reading Unit 4, Section 2 from New Pathways for Class 8. And the title of this section is From Journey to the Center of the Earth. So what you are going to read is an excerpt from the novel Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's not the complete novel. This novel was written by Jules Verne who was a uh, a German author and uh, he, this book or uh, this novel was published in the year 1864 and in this it's all written about a German professor of geology and mineralogy whose name was Liedenbrock and his nephew Exil Liedenbrock and uh, they believed that there were alkanic tubes going toward the center of the earth and this all they have read from a book which was written by Arne Seknesem who was a scholar from 16th century. And uh, this um, uh, scientist had happened to travel to the center of the earth and recorded all the instructions on how to reach it. And so they are also going to reach, uh, they are going to follow those instructions as they want to reach the center of the earth. Now the place that uh, it was mentioned, it was about it was in a volcano uh, in Iceland, and so they have to find someone who can help them, and uh, they get Hans, who becomes their Icelandic guide, and and they come across numerous adventures while they reach the bottom of the volcano, including extinct animals and natural perils. Uh, before returning to the surface again. So let's read their adventurous journey. For a long and weary hour, we tramped over this great bed of bones. So here now they are at a certain place where they are walking over bed of bones. And so they are actually walking on the bones of those creatures that had lived there many years before, okay? And uh, he says, we advance regardless of everything, drawn on by ardent curiosity. They were so much curious to uh, find what more the thing that place holds for them. Yeah? Because it was entirely a different world for them. And so it says further, what other marbles did the great cavern contain? Now, what other things of wonders this cavern contained? The cavern means... Uh, large cave what other wondrous treasures for the scientific man my eyes were quite prepared for any number of surprises my imagination lived in expectation of something new and wonderful so all these three they were advancing forward and here the narrator is Axel uh, Liedenbrock and he uh, says that no, we were just uh, expecting that something new uh, they are going to see that something which was beyond their imagination. The borders of the great central ocean. Now here uh, you might be thinking that uh, down to the bottom of the earth, uh, sorry the bottom of the volcano Know, to the center of the earth how this uh, ocean came but so they just they found that you no know, there was a expanse of water as large as the ocean and so they named it central ocean and they said that it had uh, disappeared behind the hills and these hills that were scattered over the ground and uh, occupied by the plain of bones the imprudent and enthusiastic professor. Now here Exil talks about his uncle that he did not care, care, uh, care that no, whether he lost himself or not and he made him to be uh, to walk uh, ahead. We advance silently bathe in the waves of electric fluid. So he speaks about uh, now that you know the time they were there they bathe in the waves of electric fluid. So we need to know a little bit about it. So you will see here yeah, there was a vast ocean and so there there were there certainly there will be vaporization or there will be formation of clouds and so that atmosphere was loaded with vapors uh, which carried with them the electricity that uh, formed that was formed by the constant evaporation of saline water and so the whole atmosphere was saturated with electric fluid and so they say they bathe in the waves of and if certainly there will be waves of electric fluid so 
you will get uh, you can get uh, you know mild or strong uh, shocks so by reason of a phenomenon which i cannot explain and thanks to its extreme diffusion now complete he says by reason of the fact you know like i can't explain it properly but i am so thankful to the extreme diffusion the uh, diffusion what it, mean? it means chillen diffusion when the things get spreaded isn't it spread it is now here what gets spreaded the light okay and so the light it illuminated now illuminated means it lit with bright light the shades of every hill and rock its seat appeared to be nowhere in no determined force and produced no shade whatsoever it says we it means no from where this light was coming because uh, uh, this the sun wasn't there so this uh, the light it appeared to be nowhere now with the seeds now the uh, source of it was not uh, found and then no determined force and even the shade uh, could not be formed the shade it didn't uh, cast any shadow the appearance presented was that of a tropical country at midday in summer so now he talks about the surrounding that uh, the when you look around you can see that it look just look like uh, uh, the environment look like the tropical country uh, in summer time in the midst of the equatorial region and under the vertical rays of the sun how the things will look like isn't it in the intense heat all signs of vapor had disappeared now there was no sign of vapor the rocks the distant mountains some confused masses of far off forest they assumed a weird and mysterious aspect no they look mysterious and strange under this equal distribution of luminous fluid further we resemble to a certain extent now so he now here recalls that to some extent we resemble to whom uh, we share the quality to whom to the mysterious personage to the mysterious character or a person who was in hoffman's fantastic uh, tales or stories now who was hoffman children he was a german author of fantasy and horror so one of the story was the man who lost, lost his shadow so even their shadow was not been casted because of the light after we had walked about a mile farther we came to the edge of the uh, of a vast forest now they have come to the border of a vast forest and not however one of the vast mushroom forest we had discovered near port gretchen now he says that we have come to a forest but it is not like the mushroom forest that they have seen earlier that they had discovered which was near port gretchen port gretchen is again they have given a name to the port from where they started to sail okay so this is an again a name given to it so it was a glorious and wild vegetation of tertiary period in all its superb magnificence now he speaks about the forest now it was in its best huge palms of a species now unknown he says there were huge palms but he doesn't know to which species it belonged to and there were super palmicides a genus of fossil fossil palms from the coal formation pines views cypress and conifers or corn bearing trees the whole bound together by an inextricable inextricable means that cannot be separated and complicate and complicated mass of creeping plants now so here it talks about the vegetation there was there were huge palms there were the you no know, there were the from the coal formation of pines and yews and cypresses and conifers or corn bearing trees and then there were the, even the mass of creeping plants a beautiful carpet of mosses mosses are soft green plants okay uh they grow on the wet soil and uh, they don't have roots as such and ferns they uh, beneath the trees pleasant brooks brooks are very small streams you know pleasant brooks murmured beneath why murmured is written because making a very pleasant sound 
as if small children they are uh, giggling and laughing you can say that way so the pleasant brooks murmured beneath umbrageous boughs umbrageous means giving shade no but here there is no sun so forget about uh, this about the sh shadow and boughs means branch of the trees little worthy of it this name for no shade did they give now you can't say that uh, they, they were giving shade because the reason is they didn't upon their borders grew small tree like shrubs such uh, as are seen in the hot countries on our own inhabited globe so here there was something that he could relate to that they have seen even on the surface of the on the earth and here just on the you know at the center of the earth the one thing lacking in these plants these shrubs these trees was color forever deprived of the vivifying warmth of the sun they were vapid and colorless so though they, these plants or the shrubs there they lacked color you know children why yeah because of the lack of chlorophyll no and so here the reason is there was no sun and so and these were all because they had never got the know the warmth of the sun that makes the thing so lively and so they were lifeless and colorless all shade was lost in one uniform color tint means color of a brown and faded character the leaves were wholly devoid of green there was not even a tinge of green and the flowers so numerous during the tertiary period which gave them birth were different color and without they were no they were without color and without perfume they didn't they didn't have color and perfume either or the fragrance either then so they were just like paper flowers those uh, which were discolored by long exposure to the atmosphere